everybody! Welcome to the first day of the Vibrato Challenge! I'm so glad that you're joining me. Now, for the first week, we don't need our instrument. I just have it here for some demonstration. What we do need is something that rattles. For example, a gum box, shaker, a matchbox, or anything that you can find in your household. If you don't have it right now, pause the video, go get it, and come back. Now, it is very important that we understand how vibrato is generated. Maybe we can figure it out by watching a note with vibrato. Now, what did you see? What I saw was that my hand and my forearm was rotating around the fingertip that was playing the note with the vibrato. However, I was not focusing on generating a rotative motion. If I would do that, my vibrato would sound like this. First of all, it feels really, really tight. Second of all, it's really slow and I don't really have control to make it fast. I could try, uh, ugh. but yeah, it's really not good. So this happens when we focus on a rotative motion of the forearm. So how is the vibrato generated? The vibrato motion is an up and down motion of the hand, the wrist and the forearm that turns into a rotation by stopping the motion through weight. So the friction between the finger and the fingerboard stop the motion that is going up and down and turn it into a rotative motion. All we need to do now is to practice that up and down motion in a very, very loose way because tightness is the enemy of a good vibrato. Now let's put our instruments away and let's talk a little bit about some terms that we need for vibrato. The three terms that are really important are active motion, passive motion, and counter motion. For active and passive motion, they kind of go together. For example, I want to shake out my arm. If I do that, I focus on here shaking it out in my upper arm. But look what my hand is doing. It's flopping around. However, I'm not telling my hand to do that. It's just happening because it's loose. If I would have it tight, if I wouldn't want it to flop around, it would look really weird. So an active motion is a motion that I actively generate. A passive motion is a motion that just happens because the muscles are loose. The last term was counter motion. When it comes to counter motion, I always like to take the example of a rapper. A rapper does often this, right? Now, I think the rapper is focusing on the motion of the hand going down. But what happens to my elbow? My elbow is going up at the same time that my hand is coming down, right? So I would look really stupid if I would want to be a rapper. And the only thing I do is move with my forearm. Kind of looks like a military person, yeah? So the counter motion is what makes the wrapping motion look cool. We need all of these three motions in vibrato. Now, how do we practice the vibrato motion? Let's take something that rattles. I'm taking my shaker and let's try Let's just try to shake it next to our body. Elbow up. Now, if you're anything like me, you want to do it perfectly and then you tie it up and maybe it results in this. Yeah, that's not what we want. If it happened, don't worry about it. So what we want is a motion that is generated, like I'm focusing on my wrist. My wrist is moving up and down my shoulder, my upper arm, and my elbow and everything else is super loose. 
so that I have the feeling that the motion can go into the whole body. However, I'm not generating my vibrato from my shoulder. I'm not doing this. I'm focusing on my wrist and an up and down motion of the wrist. Now what happens to my elbow? It's very similar to the motion of the wrapper. When I move my forearm down and my hand, my elbow goes up. That is only possible if my shoulder is loose and if my upper arm is also not tight. Because otherwise, it would just be a forearm motion. Now, one more thing that is really important is that the elbow has to be high enough. If my elbow is here, there will not be a counter motion. There will not be anything other than the forearm moving. So the elbow has to be up and away from the body in order for this motion to be loose. Now you can practice this slowly and you will get better and better and better. However, I challenge you to do one more thing. I challenge you to have a bigger impulse in the down and away direction. Just one. So elbow up and let's practice this. So really focus on the energy downwards. You see that my hand is rebounding upwards. That's what I want you to do. The second thing is we try to do one impulse per two motions. Now we do it with three. One, two, three. And now with four. Challenge you to do that. One, two, three, four. Once you've mastered that, just take a few days. Once you've mastered that, you can go into a continuous vibrato or a continuous vibrato motion with a shaker where you send an impulse every four beats of the vibrato. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you see that the generation of the impulse that comes from the back. I still focus on the motion here, the up and down motion. But if I have no impulse from my back, that's when everything gets super tight and my vibrato will just not work. Okay? If you have any questions, please email me, message me, just get in touch and good, good luck. Bye!